The isolation that contributed to the formation of some mountain dialects also helped Native Americans preserve their heritage in the rising tide of European culture. It talks about where the Indians used to use a cloth to make a medicine. When they used to, you had to have a cloth to put their medicine on. And that's what he's talking about on that song. Said it right here. This is one of my frog bowl. Got the what? They gun, they gun, screw you. Two last, they gun, gun. Now, one. That's how I was making pottery. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my name is Cherokee language, Marga Water Gang. No, let off sugar, not with that dagger, I'm all right. No, let off. They go here, they get locked down again. I worked all the time. And that's Cherokee language, I guess. She or she was a Talina Dan Dagahan, I see you again. My youngest one, he, that's all he knew when he first talked. It's Cherokee. And he picked up English from these other kids before he even started school. I speak all the time. I don't care if they didn't understand me, I'd get after them if I speak English. I said, I always tell them I speak in Cherokee. <laughs> well, I use Cherokee, but any time I'm talking to a Cherokee, it don't matter where it's at. <laughs> but I'd rather talk Cherokee than English. <laughs> I mean, even my grandchildren, I talk to them in Cherokee and I name them with Cherokee names for myself so I can call them. They name these babies so hard names I ain't never heard in my life. And I can't say their names, so I just name them myself an Indian name. <laughs> well, that's the way it was anyway, a long time ago. They had to uh, name them an Indian name. No, they don't even know what their Indian name is. Prior to colonization, the area that would become North Carolina was home to numerous native language groups, including Iroquoian, Algonquian, and Siouan language families. In 1870, the United States government established mandatory boarding schools for Indians across the country. Young Indians were forced to live apart from their parents in the federal schools. Their hair was cut, their clothes were replaced by school uniforms, and the use of their native language was punished severely. All of these children were assigned new English names. They wanted to civilize us, I suppose. They were punished for being, you know, for speaking Cherokee. So I think that was when it became uh, endangered. Um, of course, you know, we feel the effects of it now because there's so many that don't speak the language. Every time someone that spoke Cherokee dies, and there's been quite a few more and more. As they get older, it makes me feel kind of bad. <clears throat> so now, uh, we use it some here, not like we did. We only have one preacher that could uh, preach Cherokee without any English, only one left. We had two and one died a few months I mean, ago. They did speak in Cherokee, mostly all of them, way back when I was growing up. They wouldn't 
to it. There weren't too many people that speak in English, just a few of them. And you'd go to the home, they all speak in Cherokee, everywhere you went. And now you can't go nowhere, and they'd say, I don't know how to speak it. Cherokee language is almost gone. There's probably less than 300 Cherokees that speak fluent Cherokee, you know. When I was a kid, I was very much aware of that, that cadence in the craft shops. I worked in the craft shops down there from the time I was 14. They, you know, it's probably against the law. Uh, clear up to when I graduated from college. I go back in the summer and work down there in the summer when, when I was in college. There's an awful lot of fake Cherokees now, guys making a good living pretending to be Cherokees uh, that are really extroverted, uh, extroverted and sort of show people. You can pro usually identify a fake Cherokee by his name. You know, if it's a beautiful name, floating eagle feather, you know, snow bear, you know, beware, beware, beware. Uh, because the Cherokee names, uh, there are some colorful ones, but what you hear more often is uh, tunai, uh, crow, big meat, smoker, stomper, uh, swimmer. Uh, it doesn't don't have the drama that people like in a colorful uh, princess pale moon. Uh oh, look out! <laughs> of course, there's a genuine effort in Cherokee to give you the true Cherokees, but uh, lots of times the tourists aren't interested in that. They want bloody tomahawks and scalping, and they want. Uh, uh, what they're accustomed to off of the TV. They want to see uh, Deer Slayer right there on Main, Main Street, you know. And if you tell them that the Cherokees were sophisticated and agrarian, they raised cotton, uh, they had a, their own alphabet, syllabary, their own newspaper back in the 1820s, uh, they get bored. That's not really what they want. It's not the image they want. The Cherokee culture and language will survive because of the great emphasis that has been going on for the last five or six years. And I think that we are getting to the children at the right time, and that is birth on. Language is culture and uh, culture is language. That's who we are. Our language is who we are. Once you start learning the language, it branches out to all other areas, history, culture, traditions. So when they're learning the language, they're learning you know, everything about the Cherokee people as well. Not many of us can fully say things like the older people can, but we're learning, which yeah. makes it better. Not many people can say they have, they can speak two different languages, and I mean, especially a Native American language, and I think that's pretty, it's pretty cool that we, that, that's our heritage, that we, we're learning our heritage. Like, well, no offense, but if you see, like, white people and stuff, uh, like, <laughs> talk to each other about them and they don't know, I don't know, it just kind of feels good to <laughs> have our own language that nobody else can understand. All our elders know it, but like if we don't learn it, it's and they're not, gone, then it's gonna be nobody gone. knows it. So if we don't learn it, Nobody know it, and it's like our heritage is gone. And we've got some here yet, you know, speak Cherokee. In the 40s and 50s, no kids to speak Cherokee. But they're learning, they sing, the kids catch on quick. 